OK. Um, so ladies and gentlemen, what we have up here is we have a linear, corn, um, linear combination of a vector. And let's just kind of go through a couple different ways that we've been able to um, describe our vectors real quick. So the first way we learned a vector, let's just use, let's use vector v w since we have u and v here. I said vector w, we could represent that as a coordinate point or as a coordinate vector component form of w1, w2 vector, right? Then I explained you could, we can also write this as a linear combination. Right? Same exact thing, represent the exact same vector. Right? Then we also said there's another way that we could do this. We could also take this and rewrite it as a unit vector multiplied by a magnitude with an angle. So we also said we could say this is the same thing as, um, let's do magnitude of z, which would be your magnification vector. Right? Because remember, this, uh, this is your magnitude will be your scalar times the cosine of theta i plus magnitude of your vector z times sine of theta j. These are three different ways for us to be able to represent pretty much the exact same vector. Here's just your component form, right? Looks very much similar like a coordinate point, but it's going to create a vector. Here, it's written as a linear combination of your two unit vectors i and j. And here, it's written as your unit vector, again, and then multiplied by a magnitude. And here, you're dealing with your two angles um, to go and deal with cosine and sine. So we've talked about this for all three different ones. Now, they're saying find the angle. So they're saying find the angle between our two vectors. So we need to find the angle between u and v. And hopefully, you guys remember the, the, the rule for or the for if we find the angle between u and v is the cosine of theta equals u dot v divided by the magnitude of u times the magnitude of v. Okay, So what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is first we need to determine then what our points are, right? What our coordinate points are for this. Well, what you notice is this magnitude Magnitude of z times cosine of theta, that's equal to your w1. right? That's the same thing. So let's look up here, and what do we have? So do we have our cosine of 3, three pi over 4? Is that being multiplied by any magnitude? No. So you could say the magnitude of v and the magnitude of u are both equal to 1, because they're not being multiplied by a magnitude. right? They're multiplied by, they'd be multiplied by a number, like 5 or 10. They're multiplied by a magnitude. So these, u and v, are both unit vectors. Right? Their magnitude is 1, and they land on the unit circle. And you can see that now we have our angles. Can we evaluate for cosine of 3 pi over 4? And can we evaluate for cosine of pi over 3? Yeah. So therefore, by evaluating for them, we can now find out what our, w1, or our u1, our u2 are, and our v1 and our v2. And once we know what u1 and v1 are, and u2 and v2, can we then use the dot product and find the magnitude? Yes, yes, OK. All right, good. So let's go and let's go and determine then. Let's rewrite these to go and figure out what we have. So in reality, I can evaluate this. Cosine of pi over 3, right? Pi over 3 is going to be 60 degrees. So therefore, the point on the unit circle is going to be 1 half. 1 half i plus the sine of, I'm sorry, not sine of. Sine of pi over 3 is going to be? There we go. Somebody remember their unit circle. Good. Then we have v cosine of 3 pi over 4. Does everybody follow me so far? OK. So now, these are written out. So if you guys remember what I had written here, so now I had them as a linear combination of their unit vectors times a magnitude. Now we wrote them as a linear combination. Maybe it might be helpful to write them just in their component form, just so when we do the dot product, it'll help you guys out. So let's write them in component form. We don't have to, but I just want to do it to maybe help you guys out and see that those are just all different ways of writing it. Right? 
You guys follow that? So now, if I want to find the angle between these two vectors, I need to do the dot product of u dot v. This is a little bit easier to do the dot product when you see them in this format, right? This format looks a little bit confusing, but now you know, oh, it's just this component and this one. Yeah, they're going to look like, you know, now we're dealing with some radicals and fractions, but we can still apply the dot product. So remember, the dot product of u dot v is equal to u dot 1 times v1 plus u2 times v2. All right, that's the dot product. So now, let's go ahead and do that. u dot v is going to equal 1 half times negative 2 over 2, negative square root of 2 over 2, plus square root of 3 over 2, comma, the square root of 2 over 2. That's multiplied. Yes? So we could say u dot v is now equal to negative square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 6 over 4. OK. So now let's figure out what the magnitude is. So now we've got to figure out the magnitude of u and the magnitude of v. So I'll do magnitude of u. Well, we're going to simplify here in a second. Um, yeah, well, no, you can't, you can't simplify them. You can put them in as the, sa as the same rational, but square root of 2 plus square root of 6, you can't combine that. So you can combine them together as negative square root of 2 plus the square root of 6. But we're just going to leave this right now to figure out the magnitudes, and then, let's, then we'll see what the best way to simplify this would be. So the magnitude, remember, is going to be u1 squared plus u2 squared, right? So therefore, we have 1 half squared plus square root of 3 squared. So we have 1 fourth plus um, 3 over 4. Yes? Which equals the square root of 4 over 4, which equals 1. All right? So we have the magnitude of u equals 1. Now let's do the magnitude. Oh, well, why am I even doing that? I already, we already found that out, right? Yeah. Remember when we wrote this as the magnitude? We already know the magnitude of each one of these is 1, right? <laughs> Remember that your linear combination, I just wrote, we, I talked about it in a second. I was just, I don't know why I wanted to prove again to you guys the magnitude. Remember this format, u, is the same thing as the magnitude of a vector, any vector, um, magnitude of a vector times the cosine of theta, i, plus the magnitude of a vector times your theta. What I'm just trying to say is, this is what we have your linear combination of a unit vector. And you multiply it by magnitude. What we notice is this vector is not being multiplied by magnitude, right? You don't see a number other than 1 be, that's being multiplied. There's no 9, 7. It's not being multiplied by a number, right? It's just cosine of pi over 3 times 1. So therefore, your magnitude of your vector is going to be 1, because this is a unit vector. When you have the cosine of theta i plus the sine of theta j, that represents a unit vector, right? Remember we, remember we created the unit circle, and I drew the vector, and I said, here's how you find a unit vector, right, by using cosine and sine? So we know that these two are unit vectors. Therefore, magnitude of um, u is 1, and the magnitude of v is also 1, all right? So therefore, to find this, we have, let's use a different. So now, we're going to do, so we say the cosine of theta equals this stuff, negative square root of 2 over 4 plus the square root of 6 over 4. And yes, we can maybe combine this all over 4 divided by 1, right? Because that's what the magnitudes were, right? Remember, we figured out magnitude of u equals 1. And if you guys want to do the math, you could say magnitude of v equals 1. So therefore, we know that the magnitude is equal to 1. So now we just have, really, the cosine of theta equals negative square root of 2 plus square root of 6 divided by 4. Yeah. So I, they're asking us for the angle. So we say theta equals cosine inverse 
of negative square root of 2 plus the square root of 6 divided by 4. Now, use our handy calculadora, or calculator. So we have inverse cosine of negative square root of 2. Whoa. Who said no? Who said no? Uh, let's do this. this. I mean, I mean, <laughs> oh, I got 75 degrees. Oh, you're probably right. Um, <laughs> well, How'd you do that? I did the negative square root of 2 plus the square root of 6, and I got 1.0352761818. Divided that by four, got 0 0.25881904.51, and then I did, and then I did the inverse cosine of that. Did you guys do the negative? You did the math first, and then you put it in. Yeah. Wait, so what was the answer? I, I mean, I got 75 degrees. I'll have to go and double check what we have, what the actual answer is. But if we go ahead and check, what number was that? Yeah, should have got 75 degrees. 